Hallelujah. We want to be in your presence. We don't want to leave your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
away our evil flesh, oh God. Yes. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for sending your son, yes. Jesus Christ, oh God, yes. for dying upon that cross, oh God. Yes. They crammed his head with thorns yes. for my yes. evil thoughts, oh God. They crammed his head. They crammed his hands, oh God, for my evil yes. church, oh God. Yes. They crammed yes. they nailed his hands in the cross, oh God, for my evil walk, oh God. And they transmitted inside for my love for flesh. And Lord, we thank you for sending Jesus, oh God. We thank you for your son, oh God. Can't nobody do what's like you, oh God. Can't nobody do what's like you. Father, can't do it. can't do it. Father, can't do it just like you. Hallelujah, Lord.
every day will be sweeter than the day before. I salute you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I bring greetings today from the great I am here, right here in Monticello, Arkansas. Yes. We thank God for you for tuning in this morning and of being a part of this worship experience. I don't know about you, but we can really dismiss right now and go on to the house. Amen. Amen. The sermon has been already preached in the songs, in the praise, and in the worship. We thank God for our worshipers this morning. We pray that God will bless you even the more. Amen for making preaching easy today. Amen. Yes. I don't have a whole lot of words to say amen, but I do know that I feel more freely to say them because where the presence of the Lord is, there's freedom. Yes. yes there's yes. liberty. Yes. yes. There's healing. Yes. There's happiness. And there is a fullness of joy. Yes. We thank God again for you. Thank you. We pray your strength this morning as we try to talk just a little bit for a little while. I promise you that I will not be long. Amen. As the kids say at school, I'm feeling some type of way. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Yes. The good things that the Lord has prepared for a prepared people. Amen. And I just want to let you know this morning that trouble does not last always. Yes. I know that's kind of cliches, but weeping does endure for the night. Yes. But this morning, if you just give it all to the Lord, yes. Yes. your yes. joy will come. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Amen. As it was mentioned earlier, this is Pentecost Sunday. I'm so glad that uh, our study and our teaching has been uh, this is day 50, amen, since Easter. Amen. amen. It's not going to be a hard lesson today because I'm just going to finish what I've been talking about for 50 days now. <laughs> amen. amen. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's been an enjoyable study, uh, learning about the days after Easter. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes. Learning what happened after that particular day, uh, that particular moment, knowing what took place afterwards, not what you heard, not what you thought you knew, but what you got a different revelation of understanding for um, for yourselves. We know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called. Amen. We, we want to talk to you a little bit this morning from Luke's point of view. Amen. The 24th chapter of Luke. Still, amen, talking about after the resurrection. Amen. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that he died for me. Yes. And I'm also glad that he rose for me. Amen. Amen. You really don't realize what happened in death until you begin to experience your new life. Okay. Amen. Amen. Old things are passed away. And in him, amen, things or somebody or the hit say all things are made new. Yes. Amen. All things are made new. Are we in Luke yet? We're gonna read uh let's go down to verse twenty eight. Verse twenty eight, Luke twenty four and twenty eight. 24 and 28. Start at 28. Excuse me. 24. 24. We're going to read verses uh, 28 through 32. I probably have talked a 
little bit about this, but every time I go back and start searching and yeah. reading, something different comes up. Amen. Amen. Verse 20, verse Luke 24, verse 20 says, And they drew not unto the village, uh -huh. whither they went. Hmm. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, blessed it, brake, and gave to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Verse 32. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us? while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures. Amen. 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 We want to talk to you a little bit from that 32nd verse. And they said one to another did not our heart burn within us. I love it. Sir, my yes, sir. Did not our hearts burn? Yes, sir. Come on, within come on. Us? Come on, come on, do something. If I were to give you a text or give you a topic, give you something to think on, I would probably say when your heart is right. When your heart get right, it's right. <laughs> Come on, preacher. Come on now. You might say that's what happens when your heart is right. It burns. Okay. It burns. And I'm not talking about heartburn <laughs> from eating something too spicy. Okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> or eating something too late. Help us, Lord. Amen. <laughs> I'm not talking about an uncomfortable sensation uh, that's aligned with something that you have uh, intaken food-wise that causes a discomfort. I'm talking about when you are enlightened through the scripture. When God, through the Holy Spirit, pours into you something that you just really can't let go. Uh, I would use Jeremiah, but it would probably be out of context. But Jeremiah said it's just like fire. <laughs> Shut up in my bones. Uh, I, I, I said I wasn't going to do it. I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. Wow. But it's like fire. Uh -huh. It's an inside sensation. Come on it's an inside feeling. It's an inside reassurance of not only God is for you, yeah. but God is with you. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. Amen. In, 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 in the text here, we find that this was after the resurrection. This was the third day. And the disciples were scattered everywhere. They were, so to speak, running because of their association with Jesus the Christ, the Nazarene, mm -hmm. the Savior of the world. Mary's baby that was given for an atonement for our right to the tree of life. <laughs> he was given as a living sacrifice so that you and I may be taken back into 
fellowship. Uh, the song says we were drifting. We were drifting. We were drifting far, far away. We were separated from our Father. Yes, sir. We were separated from God Himself. Amen. Amen. We were so far separated. Uh, I think that we were so out of place that we really didn't know that we were in the shape that we were in. And it's still today, some people don't realize the shape they are in. Mm -hmm. Amen. We don't really realize the fortitude. We don't really realize the privilege. We don't really realize the price that was paid for our salvation. Wow. Amen. Uh -huh. We don't realize what God did personally for you and for I. By sending his son. That we may now be afforded the privilege to live in such a manner that we can be with him at the end of his journey. Amen. 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 We don't really realize that Christ foretold that he told the story and others told the story that he was going to die. And that he was going to raise himself up again. Now, these, these disciples and these people that was now spread abroad had heard and witnessed to all the miracles and all the things that Christ had done. He had raised others from the dead. But for some reason... They could not fathom the fact that he would raise himself okay. from the dead. Come on now. Now, if I can help you up, okay. if I have the power and the strength to help you up, Come on now. surely I can, get my I can help myself up. Right. Yes, right. If I have the power and the resources to kill and to feed others, uh -huh. surely uh -huh. I can feed myself. If I have the power and the authority to heal others, surely I can heal myself. Yeah. And we still today have, and we walk in disbelief mm -hmm. that Jesus mm -hmm. is the risen Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. We have witnessed and we have heard the story of all the courageous things that Jesus did in those times. Some have been encouraging. Some have been disencouraging. Some have been comforting. Some of these things have been just downright if I wasn't there and witnessed it for myself. Uh -huh. I just can't believe it. Uh -huh. Are y'all following me? Yes. We like others have Witness the goodness of the Lord. Yes. While we are yet amongst the living. Yes. And we still have doubt. Uh -huh. That he can do it for us. We still have doubt when we get into circumstances and situations that Christ is our way in and our way out. Oh yes, I know that the cares of this world are burdensome sometimes, but he says, I will be your burden barrier. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means it says that if you give it to me, mm -hmm. if you allow me, mm -hmm. I'll carry it for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I will not allow no more to come on you than you are able to bear yourself. Yes, yes. yes. All kind of reports that came out that he was not in the grave. Other reports said that his clothes were still there and they were folded neatly like someone had took their time. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. You know how sometimes in the morning you get up you just throw stuff every, everywhere and you get on out of there? Uh, when they went into the tomb, 
First they said it was an earthquake or it was a storm that caused the stone to roll away. Oh. Then they got inside and they saw where the clothes were folded neatly. Uh -huh. Like someone that took them time purposely and folded up things like they was going without being in a hurry. Uh -huh. Are y'all following? Uh -huh. But yet, as the report came out, and they began to talk about these things, they forgot that he had already told them. Huh? He had already told them that I am going to die. Uh -huh. But in three days, uh -huh. I will raise myself up again. Well. How soon we forget what the Lord has told us. Yes. But when your heart is right, yes. when, we, when your heart is right and when you have a connection to the author and the finisher of your faith, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, but you believe that he has prepared good things. Regardless of where you're at, you believe that he has prepared good things for you. Mm -hmm. Even though you have not experienced them yet. Mm -hmm. Even though you're in a moment or you're in despair. Even though uh, the, the scripture talks about hellhounds or, or chasing you. Even though you're in a point or at a place where you are not used to being at. You still believe the report of the Lord. He was wounded for my transgressions. Yeah. And the chastisement <laughs> of his peace. Was upon him. And by his stripes. We were yes Lord. We not are here but we yes. were here. Yes. That means not. That does not mean things are going to be alright. Things are already alright. Yes, 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 See what it takes is. A transformation of the way you think. Which transform the way you see. Wow. Okay. Huh? In order for you to see different. You got to think yes, different. Yes, yes. Huh? Yes sir. You, you, you got to see yourself. Somebody wrote a song. I see myself in the future. Uh, and I look what's that? See, you got to see it happen before it happens. Huh? You, you got to see yourself in Hawaii on the beach chilling having a good time before you get there. That means you making preparations beforehand. You, you, see, you, don't, you don't wait till you get there on the trip to start planning out what you're going to do. You plan it before it happens. And so many people, they forget to make plans. Well, I don't have the money. I, I don't have the resources. I don't have this. But yeah, that don't keep you from thinking it. Huh? That don't keep you from visualizing. Huh? They're going to keep you from writing it down. Mm, yes. And they really don't keep you from believing. Uh -huh. Huh? Yes. You do. Mm -hmm. So here, these disciples, after that, they disperse. They begin to go different ways. And it says that these disciples were on their way yeah. to Emos. And it says that Emos was, I broke it down and found out it was about seven miles right. from Jerusalem. Yes, that's right. They were walking. They were walking. Huh? They were walking. And while they were walking, yeah. I'm quite sure they were having some, com some deep conversations. Yes, they were. Yes, huh? they were. You know how this is walking. You ha you're having some deep conversations. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It says here in the scripture, it says, they, while they were walking, they communed together uh -huh. and reasoned. Uh -huh. And while they was communing and talking and walking, it says, Jesus himself drew near. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And went with them. Mm -hmm. right Here's the key. Mm -hmm. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Mm -hmm. Holding. Uh -oh. The eyes were Did holding. You know they did not recognize mm -hmm. who was in their presence. Ooh, they did not recognize this same Jesus that had broke bread with them previously. Uh 
They did not recognize the same Jesus that had ministered to them and ministered to others previously. Mm -hmm. They did not recognize the same Jesus that had healed, set free, and delivered those that was wounded and bound and afflicted. Mm -hmm. They did not recognize him. Mm -hmm. Their eyes were blinded. Mm -hmm. Their eyes were deceptive. Their eyes were deceiving them. And some may say, well, it was because he was in his new body that they didn't recognize him. Because it was said that he told her, don't touch me. And then what the scripture says, he said, don't touch me. But I found out later on that I was studying, he told them, touch me. And then when I dug a little bit deeper, he told her, don't touch me, which reference is, don't cling to me. Don't hold on to me. Huh? And he told her, don't hold on to me because I have not ascended yet. I ain't left yet, so don't hold on to me because I got to fulfill the scripture. But then, when he met them, he said, touch me. Look at me now. Look at me now. Look at me now. I'm fulfilling scripture. Yes, sir. I'm doing exactly what I told you that I was going to do. Yes. Hmm? Uh huh. I got up. Just like I told you I would. Now, when they were walking and talking, it says that their eyes was holding that they should not know him, and he said, he meaning Jesus said to them, what manner of community, what y'all talking about? That's what, he, that's what he really said. Can I break it down? What are y'all talking about? Are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are saved? What are you talking about? Why are you so sad? Somebody ought to ask, why are you so sad? Why are people so mad? Why are people so sad? They walk and they talk and they mad about everything. When they should be happy about everything. Huh? All things work for the good. Huh? And then what the scripture says? Everything, all things work for the good. I know it may not feel good, but it's working for your good. It may not look good, but it's working for your good. It may not taste good, but they say it's good for your body. Mm. Yeah. So all things work for you. And so Jesus here begins to question them and ask them, what are you talking about? And I'm quite sure they was talking about, well, everything is over now. Mm. Everything is over. You know how church folk do. Everything over now. The musician done quit. We ain't have no more good church. <laughs> So and so level, hey, church ain't gonna be the same no more. Okay. Uh, you know, tell the situation. They would probably imagine a man that the Messiah is dead now. Uh huh. He was the one that was challenging the rulership and authority that was once in place. Now, because he gone, uh -huh. everything over. Go I might well go on back to where I came from. Uh huh. That's what they they were going back to where they came from. How many times do people get upset and discouraged and disgusted and turn around and go back to where they came from? Go back to the same stuff, and I know I'm probably rhetorical, go back to the same stuff that made them sick the first time. You get off the drug for 10 years and you go back to the same thing that had you cuckoo crazy not knowing what Cocoa Puffs was. I was menacing, I was talking, I shouldn't say menacing, I was conferencing with a young lady on school and she said that her boyfriend, her sister's boyfriend had got hold to something 
that made him run for five miles and they couldn't stop him. Oh, Jesus. And he said something was after me. Something was chasing me. Something was Somebody was after me. They couldn't catch him for five miles. That something was crystal meth that somebody had laced his marijuana with. See? See? Crazy because of something that he had taken into his body. Lord have mercy. Hmm? Sometimes we can do things and get involved in things and see what it does to others. But yet we have to try it for ourselves. Hmm? We see people that's cracked out and living in boxes and talking around, talking to the air, and walking around and don't know where they're at, and walking out in the middle of the street, doing all types of things that's insane. Yes. And yet in our mind, I don't think we think, well, I, I can handle it. That's what they thought too. Yes. Come on. That's what they believe too. Preach. Preach. But look at them now. Yes, sir. Preach, brother. As a matter of fact, you were worse off than they were. The same people you talked about, now you are that person. person. Yes. Woo. God, have mercy. What manner of communication? Why is it that you give it up on hope so fast? Come on, preacher. Why is the church, why is the Christians, why, why are we quitting? Yes. Come on, yes. preacher. Yes. Why are we having these conversations about what is wrong? Yes. We should be talking about what is right yes. about the church. Yes, yes. preach. What has the church done that has you profited from? Yeah. Yeah. How did the pastor, how did the deacon, how did the musician, how they call you when you were sick? Yeah. Uh -huh. How they sent flowers to Nobody your grave? How they Come sent on, food preacher. to your house? Come on, preacher. Come on. What's right about the church? Yeah. What did Christ do for you personally even when you were not here? He said he died before you were even born. That means Christ was thinking about you while you were yet in your mother's womb. Oh, God. He saved you. Come on, preacher. Before you were born. All you have to do is accept the gift of salvation. What manner of communication? Why y'all talking about me? I'm sure that's what he was saying in his mind. Why y'all talking about me and why you're so sad? Verse 18 says, and one of them whose name was Cleophas. Uh -huh. There was two, but it's odd that the scripture just mentions one of them name. Answer and said unto him, Art, now check it out now, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Now they begin to question Jesus. Are you a stranger here? Haven't you heard? Don't you know what they did to Jesus? Man, they killed him. They killed him. Haven't you heard what they did over there? Them folks out there praying and they locked him up. I ain't gonna pray. Haven't you heard that the pastor wants you to come in and pray? I'm just talking. I don't know why I'm coming. I'm just talking. The pastor wants you to come in and pray? I ain't going over there to pray. That, that's, that's on the east end. That's where the drug dealers at. That's where the robbers at. But guess what happens when they leave the east end? They come to the north, the south, the east end. They don't just stay on the east end. They come to your end. I'm just saying. Are you a stranger? Have you heard what's been going on? Don't you know the thing? which have happened in these last three days? Did you know that they crucified Jesus, the Messiah, the one that we had all of our hope and our faith in? Didn't y'all hear that he died? People still act like he did. Hmm? People still act like Jesus did. Hmm? That we act like we act like he's still dead. He ain't dead. Come on, y'all talk about he ain't dead. He yet lives and he lives in you. He lives in you. On the day of Pentecost, when he was talking about, it says that he told them before he sent them out, he says, as my father gave to me, 
I'm going to give to you. And he says, he breathed on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He gave them something. He's given you something. All you have to do is receive it. As he sent them, as he was beginning to dispatch them, that's what he said he did. He said he breathed on them. And they all received the Holy Ghost. When you have the Holy Spirit living in you, he is your guide. He is your comfort. He's your way in, your way out. He's everything that you need. He is the one that goes before you. He is the shield around you. He is your protector. He's your peace. He's your joy. He's, all, he's the power that's working through you. Yeah, yeah. I'm about finished. I'm about finished. And then he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, the prophet, the people, the mighty, the deeds, the word of God, all the people, and how the chief priests and all the rulers, they killed him. They gave him up. They delivered him. They didn't deliver him. They just fulfilled the plan. Hmm? When you are going through trials and tribulations, all you're doing is just living the plan. Hmm? All you're doing is just living out what God has intended for you to go through in order for him to get the glory. Are y'all talking to me? All you're doing is just living the plan that God has ordained for you. Nothing happens in your life, over your life, to your life, unless God allows it. Can I prove it? When, 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 when he offered up Job, the scripture says he was going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Uh -huh. And, and, have you considered my servant, my servant Job? Uh -huh. Have you considered him? Uh -huh. He offered him up. Uh -huh. Amen. But 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 he gave specific instructions. Uh -huh. Don't do what? You can't touch what? You can't touch his soul. Uh -huh. You can mess with his stuff. Uh -huh. See, the devil gonna mess with your stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. But he can't have your soul. Uh -huh. The devil going to hurt your feelings. But he can't have your soul. Yeah, uh -huh. The devil going to cause you to walk away from things. But he can't mess with your soul. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. He can't mess with your soul. Your soul belongs to the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yeah. So they were having this conversation. They said he crucified. They killed him. But we trust that. It had been he which should have redeemed Israel. We thought he was gonna he was gonna help us. Many people come to church misguided and misunderstood because they don't know the scripture. Okay. Come on, teach today. They don't know what the scripture says. Come on, yeah. teach today. They don't know what church is really about. Uh -huh. The church is not the building. Uh -huh. The church is you. Uh -huh. Put your trust. Not in man, but put your trust in the Lord. Uh -huh. When you put your trust in the Lord, yes. you will never be dissatisfied. Uh -huh. You will never be disheartened. You will never be disgusted. You will never feel like somebody did you wrong. Uh -huh. Because you are trusting in the plan of the Lord. Yes. Yeah, it says that. There were certain women also in our company made us astonished, which we were, which were early at the scepter. And when they found him, not his body, they came saying that he had also seen visions of angels, hmm? which said that he was alive. Yeah. Hmm. Now, now, <laughs> the women, oh, come on, women came to the come on, to the grave. Women. The angels told the women, he alive. Uh, the women told the men, and they still didn't believe it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says that the women, so as the women had said, but him, they saw him not. 
but the angels told him that he has risen. Got to run. 25, I'm going to close it out. Oh, fools. This is Jesus. And slow of heart to believe. Woo, that's hard. Oh. Then he said to them, oh, fools. Oh. Hear that word again. And slow of heart oh, my to believe. Oh, my goodness. All the prophets have spoken. All of them. Hmm? Yeah, been talking about this for centuries. This Jesus just ain't been talked about here in 2021. Come on, preacher. You've been hearing about this Jesus since you were probably two, three years old that you can understand Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you didn't hear from your mom, you heard it from your grandma. Uh, yeah. If you hear from your grandma, you hear from your grandma, you heard it at school. Uh -huh. If you hear it at school, you heard it on the streets. If you didn't hear from the streets, you heard from a fool that was drunk crazy still talking about Jesus. <laughs> Jesus been talked about forever. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But he says, when you don't believe, he says. Oh, fools. Uh -huh. Fool. Yes. Uh-huh. Hmm? Uh-huh. <laughs> Not only a fool, but you slow. Hey, <laughs> 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 <Ain't> right? Hey, <laughs> right? See, see, some people try to be slick, but they slow. <laughs> Yeah. You can't be slick and slow. You, your, 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 your neurons can't be fine and worn and you try to do something slick. Okay. You gotta be a thinker okay. to be slick. Uh -huh. Oh, folks, you gotta get a girl in the morning to beat me. Okay. But you do know there's nothing new under the sun. Right. The same tricks. That... Whatever. Come on, Richard. Okay, I'm leave that alone. Come on, oh, fools are slow and hard to believe, to believe, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Mm -hmm. Oh, not Christ have suffered these things and entered into his glory. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Well, you're basically telling him, should he not have died and gone on back where he came from? Did you think he was going to be here forever? Mm -hmm. Huh? Did you, did you not believe what he said? Oh, not Christ. If he did not do that, that would have made him a liar. And we know that Christ is not a liar. And the beginning, Moses and the prophets, he expounded unto them that in all the scriptures, the things concern themselves. So they walk and they talk and they have this conversation and they encounter a man on the road. And when they encounter the man on the road, it says, but they constrained him. That means they start talking to him and saying, abide with us. Come on, walk with us. See, what we don't realize is that we need Jesus to walk with us. When Jesus is not walking with you, that means you are walking alone. Ain't good. You're walking alone. Ain't good. Amen. Your protection is not with you. Well, some people say, well, I got Smith and I got Wesson. But your protector, the man who gave the person the idea to make Smith and Wesson, the man that created that thought in that person's mind to make Smith and Wesson. No matter what caliber it is, he gave somebody the wisdom and the knowledge to create Smith and Wesson. Yes. I would much rather have the creator than the creation. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. If you have that type of, willing, with, uh, uh, type of knowledge and wisdom that you will never be without. Yes. So you need Christ, first of all, to walk with you. Yes. Hmm? Yes. You need him to abide with you. Yes. You need him to tell you and to remind you that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. The scripture goes on to say the conversation got so good that he said that won't you tarry with us? Yes. Well, won't you spend the night with us? See, we forget that we need Jesus in the morning. We need Jesus in the noonday. We need Jesus at night. We need Jesus all the time. We just don't need him when we need him. We need him when we don't need him. Same. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah, we need him when things are not well, just as well as when things are going good. We yeah. need him to be with us at all times. Yeah. Yeah. We need him to fulfill the scripture that says, I will never leave nor forsake you. God, prove to me that you will leave nor forsake me. Yeah. Yes. And look for it. Yeah. Look for it. Look for God to prove himself to be who he is. Yes. He's our way maker. Yes. 
He's our way maker. Yes. He is God. Yes. And it's ironic that they, even in them talking with him, they still did not recognize. People still are not recognizing Jesus is in it. Yes. He's yes. on it. Yes. He's for it. Yes. He's on purpose. He's on time. Yes. God of people says he's an old time God. Yes. And somebody else says, oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. He's, he's on time. Yes. He's always on time. Yes. And he says as he began to walk and talk with them, he did. He says it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. 31 says and their eyes were open and they knew him. Yes. Uh, they recognized something familiar. Yes. It was something about the way he did this. And I'm pretty sure that the scripture says that he broke bread with him. But I remember in scripture, every time he would break bread, he would pray to the Father. Come on now, Jesus. He would pray to the Father. Yes. And I'm quite sure that something came to remember then that he had a father also. Yes. He was living proof that he was able to do things from his father. Yes. And because they saw relationship when he prayed to his father, they knew that they have had to have a relationship to their father or your father. Yes. Relationship was established and then they identified who he was. And it says their eyes were open and they knew him, but he vanished out of their sight. Yes. Oh Lord. Once they recognize who he was. Now, we can say that one or two ways. We can say that mission was accomplished. Yeah. Huh? We can say that his mission was accomplished. Yeah. We can say he, 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 he finally got them to a point yeah. where they knew who he was. Mm -hmm. We can say that he, he, saw, he, he taught them to remember him always. Yeah. We can say whatever, but we, most of what we can say, we can say their heart got right. Because the scripture then goes on and says, did not our hearts burn? Yes. That means that something happened on the inside on, when Jesus began to comfort them yes. with the words. That's it. That's it may not, it, we may say, well, the food, no, it was the words. It was the word, Father. Yes, sir. That was the word. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank God for yes. what they was about to receive. Yes. We have to learn to thank God even when we have not received it. We have to learn to thank God for what we are about to receive. Yes. Thank you for that. Are you hearing me? Yes. When you begin to thank God for what you're about to receive, you ain't got time to be doing on what you don't have. Oh, yeah. You begin to thank Him for what you're about to receive. Yes. Your vision is coming. Yes. Your script is coming. Yes. Your house is coming. Yes. Your car is coming. Yes. Your health is coming. Yes. Your blessing is coming. Your deliverance is coming. Your husband is coming. Your wife is coming. Everything that God promised you is coming. Just begin to thank Him for it. Thank Him from your heart. Begin to allow God to do what He wants to do in your heart. And then you will have the testimony of some of the saints of old. If it wasn't for the Lord who was on my side, I would have quit. The saints of old never gave up on God. Yeah. They never gave up on God. And because they didn't give up on God, some of those same things are implanted in us. We are products of praying grandmothers and praying grandfathers and praying cousins and yeah. praying people that prayed our way through even before we made it through. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me today? Yeah. They said their hearts burned at me. They got their remembrance back. They got their remembrance back, and it's proven in Scripture says once they got their remembrance back, which was their confidence. Yeah. See, in order to walk this walk, yeah. in order to talk this talk, you got to have confidence and be assured that God is for you. Yeah. And he will never leave nor forsake you. Yeah. He said, I'll be with you even until the end of time. Yeah. We don't know when, we don't know where, we don't know how, but we do know that time is clearing. Oh, yeah. Time is running out. We get closer and closer to our last few days. We don't know when the sky is going to crack, but we do know he said that he's coming back for a people, a prepared people, a people that love the Lord, a 
a people that's rejoicing in the God. Oh, ye saints, rejoice ye in the Lord. Are yes. oh, y'all hearing me today? And when they figured out and got their mind right and got their heart right, the scripture says they went back. They weren't scared no more. They weren't scared no more. Come with me. Do what you want to do. I'm going back to when they crucified my Savior. I'm going back and I'm going to fight the good fight. I'm going back to the place where they stretched him wide. Where they hung him out. You see, I don't really believe what people realize when they wear that cross around their neck. I don't really believe that people realize what they're wearing. I don't really believe that they, they appreciate what they're wearing. That cross means that there was a price paid just for me. Huh? There was blood spilled just for me. There was hands given up just for me. There was a piercing in the side just for me. There was a crown around his head just for me. Just for me. He laid his head in the locks of his shoes. Just for me. Just for me. He gave up the ghost. Just for me. Just for me. And I feel like the woman with the issue of love. If I can just touch. If I can just touch Jesus. If I can just get to him. So the scripture says she pressed her way. Somebody ought to press their way today. Somebody ought to shake it off today. Somebody ought to give up today. Somebody ought to forgive today. Somebody ought to bless the Lord today. Somebody ought to think on the goodness of the Lord today. God will. God will. It is His will. That we should prosper. surgery. He was witnessing to me that his blood pressure is steadily dropping. And they don't know why it's dropping. Didn't have no taste for food. As he drinks, he's sure he throws it up. Everything he takes in, it throws up. He was saying his wife keep telling me that you gotta eat it when you don't like it. He said a familiar thing that I'd heard from my uncle when he was going through. You just don't know how I feel. And if I could sing that song, I would have sung it to him, but I began to talk the words of I feel like going on. And I told him, you got to feel like going on. You got to feel like going on. just one of the millions. You just want to feel that are going through what you're going through. But if you would just feel like going on, you can't let your per present circumstances determine your present position. And I let him know that God has not forgotten him. God has not forgotten him. I know that may be cliche it may sound like I'm just quoting scripture, but God has not forgotten you because every time you've had an emergency, he was close enough to get to the doctors. And the doctor was able to treat you. And if you have to go back in the hospital, I don't want to go back in the hospital, but if you have to go back in the hospital, just believe that God has already ordained you're going back. And when you come back this time, that situation and that problem is going to be all right. I said, as a matter of fact, it's already all right. And I'm going to let you know today, 
if you keep God close to your heart, He'll guard your affections. He'll guard your affections. He won't let you get too far out there in your thinking. He won't let you act like the disciples act. He won't make you run. He won't allow you to run. He'll make you stay there to face your giants. And I told him, I remember a guy that only had a piece of rubber and a rough rock. Yes. He wasn't even a smooth rock. It was a rough rock. And when old God Lion came before him, he took that slingshot and that old rough rock and he slayed the giant. And I want you to know today that giants, circumstances, situations, they do fall. Yes. And God has you. Just like these two disciples did. Get your confidence back. Get your reassurance back. I'm talking to somebody today that's thinking about giving up. That's on the edge. It may even be suicide. It may even be leaving your husband, leaving your wife. It may be even leaving the church. It may be even leaving your job. I don't know what you're thinking about leaving. I don't know what you're running from. But once you have a conversation and once you allow Christ to be in your business, let him get in your business. Everything will work out just the way he said it would. Hallelujah. We thank God for you today. Hallelujah. that this is Pentecost. Pentecost just simply means 50. A lot of us over 50. <laughs> A lot of us over 50. But have you received the gift of the Holy Spirit? Some people say, well, I don't want it. Like my grandmother said, I don't want it. But you need it. You need him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
He said, we got to pray to him. He's the Lord of the harvest. And that he hears and he knows. Amen. He knows where the harvest is. So in that praying, we began to pray for the harvest that's already connected to the body of Christ. Amen. We're praying. I don't, I don't know. I'm, a, I don't, I'm looking in the audience and I know how many of, how many are part of this <laughs> ministry. I, I don't know where you are this morning. I don't know why you continue to refuse to be a part of the church body entirely, 100%. But I want you to know that we are praying for you. I heard someone say the other day, we're praying for that same Walmart faith to become a church faith. The same job faith that you have to go to work every day. That become the faith that you have to be connected to the body. Because I don't know if you don't understand what season it is, but this is a tight season, and we ain't gonna be here long. We're not gonna be here long. Jesus is really soon to return. Amen. And it's not even any time to play. It's not a time to play. And he has a work for the people of God to do. Not just the great I am, but the people of God. Pastor said something. He said, why? Why are we still talking about what's wrong with the church instead of what's right with the church? And we don't talk like that. But I have to say, I get irritated at the criticism of church and people thinking that they're busting the church. That's why we got to pray. They think they're busting the church out when they go to Facebook or Instagram or have their videos. But what happens is... Not only do you lessen the light of your own ministry, I don't care how people, we, we try to pick out everything, the reason people are not a part of the body of Christ or the effective four walls of church or the sanctuary or the synagogue. You know, you got to understand, you got to read the word and study it, okay? So you will understand that it's not, it is not uh, unusual. It's not that you can't or you don't have to be a part of the church you don't have to be a part of the church to be saved. But if you saved, you're a part of the church. Because as the scripture teaches us, there was a synagogue that people came together. Yeah. They came together. They came together. The disciples had a type of church. He called 12 people together. And they had conversations as he just talked about on that road, but they had conversation. And we're making a real plea for you to not allow the enemy to cloud your thoughts and darken your heart and cause scales on your eyes to still be there where you can't really see. But it's a setup from the devil to keep you separated from where your protection is because God's people come together. They came together Years, thousands of years ago, they came together in a covering. And when they came together in that covering, his presence was there. Yes, the Ark of the Covenant. That's why you can't just do anything in the synagogue. Because God requires, God wants to be there. And meet us when we're there. There's a purpose for you. And we're praying for the harvest from the north, south, east, and the west. Because we're losing people, it would appear that we're losing. But there's a job that we have to do. Somebody in our household needs saving. As ugly as they can be to us, sisters, brothers, children, as much as they don't want us in their business, they need us in their business. And this is the time the world needs us. The presidents need us. The governor needs us. The senators, the Congress, the kingdom of God needs his people on their assignment. So I'm praying for the harvest. And I, I admonish you to continue to pray for the harvest as he spoke, spoke about those who were on drugs and alcohol and, and the prostitute and, and the, listen, I don't like to see them on the streets. Do you like to see them on the streets? We don't like to see them on the street corner. 
Listen, we got a little rock can sit upon us, but if you went right down the streets to Dermot, that's some here. We can we know the area. But if you go straight down the streets, we went down there for ministry. Y'all keep going. We went down there for ministry, you guys. And I said, the Lord said, tell the brother, let's go out at night. And when I went down there, I was so surprised. It was like the streets of San Francisco, somebody behind it. They may be moved now, but I know they were out. And, I, and, I, and, and what was so startling is that a gentleman that used to play in the church he was out there, and I did not know he had an issue. Listen, people have issues that we need to help them with. And we can't do it naturally. We got to do it in the spirit, because these things come through fasting and praying. You can talk all day long, but you're not going to be able to break any of those spirits or any of those strongholds off their lives unless you go to God through fasting and praying. God, we praise you, and we honor you today. And we bless you, God. God, we realize this is a serious matter that we're in. And God, we know that this is Pentecost Sunday. And when they all met on the day of Pentecost, your spirit came down. They were all with one accord, one mind, God, one purpose. And I pray, oh God, that you would put your people on one purpose. And Father God, that is to be a witness for your kingdom, oh God. I pray, oh God, for the harvest, oh God, from the north, south, east, and the west. Father God, that you would tear down walls, oh God, that you did not create in their lives. God, every hindering spirit, oh God, that come to defeat them, God, you are never defeated and they are not defeated. Yes. We plead yes. the blood of Jesus, oh God, over every addiction, oh Father God, yes. in the mighty name of Jesus, whether they are addicted to drugs and alcohol or whether they are addicted, oh God, to sexual habits, oh God, and impurities of life, and uh, God means that are not more, oh God. We tear it down right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, move in the house, oh God, of the mother, God, the single mother, God. Touch them right now. Encourage your spirit, oh God, oh God, strengthen them and help them to stand right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I'm praying, oh God, for the divorcees, oh God, for those who are thinking about divorce, God. I pray, oh God, that you will break that spirit of infidelity right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, break the spirit of miscommunication right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, move, oh God, over broken hearted, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, lead, oh God, and fix it right now, God. Don't depart, God. Oh God, be every need, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I speak abundance, oh God, and I speak against life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, that you will move on your people, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, that we will be certain of the call, oh God. Father God, you said, make our election sure, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Help us, oh God. Even when we don't know the direction, God. Help us to trust you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. For without faith, oh God, it's impossible to please you, God. Strike in us, oh God. You're the only help that we know. You're the only help that we need. You're the only help that we want, God. Follow your people that are watching today, oh God. Strike in us, oh God. Help us to trust you, 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 oh God. Every decision you get in the midst of it, oh God. Even when we don't understand, oh God. Let your will be done and let your kingdom come. Let your joy, peace, and righteousness reign right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, God. Thank you, Lord. Keep singing. Now the doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are really open. If there's anybody here in the midst of us that want to make a decision today to come forward and then to become a part of the body of Christ, the representation of the great I Am Temple, we're willing to accept you. Those who are online that are watching, if you don't have a consistent covering, we're willing to take you in and to do our best to cover you wherever you are. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank God for your participation. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Just go find the great I am. And our picture is there. You can give by way of Cash App, TGIATP. You can go to our website, TG, wait, Mom, I've got the website name, <laughs> the great I am temple.org. Amen. Or you can mail it to P.O. Box 241, Monticello, Arkansas, 71657. Or you can see a member. Amen, and be a blessing. We just thank God for whatever your heart's desire, the way God moves. And we want to thank those who are faithful to the ministry. We know that God does not uh, go without looking at your faithfulness. And we just appreciate you for being on board with us. Whatever you bless the Lord with, we bless this ministry with. We believe it's good ground. Amen. We're going to use it according to the will of the Father. Amen. To you. Amen. Come on, put your hands together, stand, and we're going to be dismissed. Amen. For those of you who are out there, amen, watching, we just thank you for joining us this morning. Father, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for your presence. God, I pray that you would go with us and be with us, oh God, as we leave this place, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.